Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a quick look at the new Microsoft Copilot that is launching on Windows 11 with the latest Windows 11 updates. This is essentially a replacement to Cortana uh, that's smarter because it's using modern AI technology. This is built off Bing Chat which was unveiled earlier this year and took the world by storm as it's using open AI technology to sort of enhance search queries and other tasks that you may want to ask a virtual assistant. So let's dive straight in. This is the UI. You can see on the taskbar here, there is an icon for it. It's currently in preview, which means its feature set isn't fully complete yet. Right now it's kind of very basic, but it will get a lot more complex as time progresses. So here's the icon on the taskbar. And when you click on it, you will get this interface. This is the Copilot interface. And at the bottom here, we have our chat box, which allows us to insert commands or ask questions. And then we can use Copilot from there. So let's start with a question. What is the weather like in Seattle today? And let's see what uh, Copilot comes up with. So there you are, that is its response to what is the weather like in Seattle today. And you may have noticed at the top of the interface, there was an option to uh, change the kind of response you receive. That was a balanced response, which took a little while for it to generate. You can also ask it for a more precise response that will sort of get rid of all the fluff here and just give you an answer. It would have just said, hey, it's 12 degrees uh, centigrade or uh, 53 degrees Fahrenheit if you had set it to more precise. So if we refresh this and start again and ask the same question, you'll see here if I set it to more precise and ask what is the weather like in Seattle today? Ideally, this should be a much faster response. Now it'll always take a moment for it to actually gather the information from the internet. But as you can see, we're already getting an answer now. And uh, ideally this would be a lot shorter. I'm not too sure if that was shorter, but it was certainly more precise. We gave, it gave us a list of bullet points versus a paragraph of more human-y chats. This was very much just like, hey, here's the weather here and here's all the information you need. So that's the difference between uh, balanced and precise. There's also a more creative conversation style, which uh, is useful for when you want to uh, write an email or send a message to a friend or family member. It's able to assist you with those sort of tasks. So if I wanted to select more creative here, and ask it to write me an, a short email about congratulating my, congratulating my best friend on his wedding. We'll see what Bing comes up with here because it is using Microsoft Bing behind the scenes. Here we go. So it's now generating that email. It was a possible email that you can send to your best friend to congratulate him on his wedding. Subject, congratulations on your wedding. Dear John, I hope this email has fired you well. It's actually writing a lot here. Now, I would recommend in real life writing your own email to your best friend about congratulating him on his wedding. But if you aren't able to do that, <laughs> Ping Chat, I guess, can uh, help you out in a pinch. And at the top here, you can always like or dislike the responses if you agree or disagree with whatever Bing comes up with. Below this, you can see we have a bunch of recommended responses, uh, including you can ask Bing, uh, what should I get for their wedding? So that's an interesting choice. So let's do that. Let's see what comes up if we ask it that. Keep in mind, it has no idea who my best friend is. <laughs> um, but it's gonna give me some uh, some advice on how to buy uh, a wedding gift. So that's pretty awesome. Now you can see here there's a stop responding button. Sometimes uh, the co-pilot can get a little bit too carried away and keep talking. Uh, and so if you're kind of done, if you've got your answer up here, for example, you can just hit stop responding and that will end the, um, the response that it's currently generating. Okay, let's restart once again. We'll go back to the balanced option because this is the sort of default mode that I think you'll be using it for most um, sort of queries. In addition to the internet stuff, as I was just showing you, it can query the internet for things like weather or gift ideas, as well as create emails or, or short messages for your friends or family. 
Uh, it can also uh, control your PC. Now, right now, this is quite basic, but this will build out over time with much more advanced functionality, including plugins, which will be launching at some point in the future that will enable third party apps such as Spotify or Adobe to utilize the Copilot as well. So for now, let's talk, take a look at some of the basic uh, functionality built into Windows. Um, it's primarily most useful when you are unsure where to find a certain setting. So for example, if I wanted to change my system theme to dark mode and I wasn't sure where to find that, I could ask Copilot to do it. So turn dark mode on. We type that in here. It will take a second to figure out what I'm actually asking it. And then ideally, yes, turn on dark mode. If I select yes here, there we are. Dark mode has now been enabled. Let's try another thing. Let's turn on do not disturb mode. So every time you sort of punch in a, a, a Windows specific command, you'll get a prompt to confirm that's what you want to do. Um, although it's now generated in answers. But if I select yes here, you may have not noticed, but do not disturb is now enabled. I can ask it to turn off do not disturb. Now take a second and then yes to turn it off. Let's see if it can open app. So open the settings app. Would you like to open the settings app for you? Yes. Oh. So it's yes like so. And the settings app has opened. So it can do basic stuff like that. Uh, but any more complex things for now, it can't really do. The only other advanced feature it has that's integrated into Copilot currently is integration with Microsoft Edge. So when you have Microsoft Edge open here, and let's open, open up a website, for example, we can click into an article, and the Copilot is able to analyze the content on screen inside Microsoft Edge and provide context or more information based on the subject you're looking at. So for example, I can ask uh, the Copilot, summarize this article. And you can see it says searching your active Microsoft Edge tab. And after a few seconds, it will summarize the article in question. So this is quite a long article here, but Copilot will uh, do its best to summarize in a number in a list of bullet points here for me. So another good thing this can do is, as I mentioned before, it can create messages for you if you ask it. So based on this article, I can ask it to write me a short tweet on the matters presented in this article so it's going to analyze the web uh, the tab again it's going to figure out what a tweet is and what a short tweet might be and here we are it's going to give us a tweet there we are that's actually relatively short and it's even given me hashtags so now if i was a lazy person i could simply copy this tweet head over to twitter.com and uh, punch in that tweet and hit enter <laughs> thanks copilot for your assistance there so what's quite interesting about the copilot is that it will always shift over the content on screen to make way for the sidebar the sidebar is always at the very top level of your interface you can't have things overlap it it's always at the very front so if i open the copilot here you'll see that it shifts over the current app that i've got running to present itself and if i try to uh, move an app over to it in front of it I can't it will just simply uh, budge up against it and Windows will treat the edge of the copilot here as if it's the edge of my display uh, which is quite interesting so if I have multiple apps running here such as file explorer as well I can snap these side by side and copilot will remain in on display as well if I close the copilot the windows will move back into their right places and if I open it again windows will adjust them to continue snapping although even with Copilot now on screen. So as I mentioned, the Copilot is integrated with Bing Chat, which means it's very powerful when it comes to internet search queries. It can handle multiple search queries in one and present you with an answer. Now, these answers may not always be correct. As I mentioned, it is looking up information on the internet to provide you with answers. And sometimes answers on the internet aren't always correct. In fact, Copilot even says it here. Um, Copilot uses AI to respond so mistakes are possible and you can also send feedback if you do come across um, a piece of information that you know is wrong and you can help Microsoft correct it. Now you can see here we've also got the option to use voice input so we're going to do that for this demo here. How many Xbox Series X retail boxes can I fit in the back of a Tesla Model 3?
So now we're going to see what it has to say. Searching for Xbox Series X retail box dimensions. Searching for Tesla Model 3 trunk dimensions. That's an interesting question. To answer it, we need to know the dimensions of the Xbox Series X retail box and the Tesla Model 3 trunk. According to the web search results, the Xbox Series X retail box has a height of 30.1 cm, a width of 15.1 cm, and a depth of 15.1 cm. The Tesla Model 3 trunk has a height of 35.4 inches, 89.9 cm, a width of 38.8 inches, 98.6 cm, and a depth of 37.2 inches, 94.5 cm. Multiplying these numbers, we get the total number of boxes that can fit in the trunk. 2 times 6 times 6 equals 72. Therefore, you should, you can fit up to 72 exposures at retail boxes in the back of the Tesla Model 3 trunk. However, this is a theoretical maximum, and that does not account for any gaps, etc., etc. So, and it even gives you a bunch of links to buy an Xbox Series X if you are planning to indeed fit 72 of them in the back of your Tesla. But that is an example of the kind of thing Bing Chat can do. Um, it can handle multiple queries in a single question and find the answer and merge them for you. You know, traditional uh, internet searches, it, that's not really possible. You can't ask a, a Google to, to find the answer to two different things at the same time. But with Copilot and Bing Chat, you can. You can also ask it for things that you may not know the answer to. So you can describe it something and ideally it will find an answer for you. So let's try this. What is the name of that show with a blue police box? Give it a sec to look that up. Searching for show with a blue police box. The name of the show with the blue police box is Doctor Who. It is a British science fiction. There we go. Perfect. So it's now given us not only the name of the show, but a whole bunch of context that you may or may not wanted. Again, that's what the, the, the three options at the top are for here. You can set it to precise and it will ideally sort of exclude all of that extra information, uh, that context, if you will. It, it likes to provide context uh, quite a lot. But if you set it to more precise and ask questions, it will simply just give you an answer um, <laughs> without giving you that extra fluff that you may not necessarily be interested in. What was the name of Rihanna's last album and how many copies did it sell? Searching for Rihanna's last album name and sales. Ah, oh, so interesting. I asked it two questions here. And I'm guessing maybe they did not reveal them the amount of copies sold for that album. Um, but it's given me a bunch of other information which I may find relevant. Perhaps let's try uh, something else. What was the name of Bungie's last Halo game and how many copies did it sell? Searching for Bungie's last Halo game sales. There we are. So as you can see, it has provided me with the name of the game, when it was released, and the amount of copies it sold in the first month of release. Now I have asked how many copies it sold over a lifetime, but maybe that information isn't public. So the number it's given me is 3.3 million. Um, perhaps that's more. But as you can see, it, it has been clear that it is only giving me the number for the first month of release. Uh, it was also the best-selling game on Xbox Live, surpassing Halo 3. So there you go. That's the kind of thing you can do with Bing Chat and Copilot. It's able to handle multiple queries at once, uh, which is quite different from a traditional search. And with that, it, that is a quick look at the Microsoft Copilot, which is launching on Windows this fall. You may already have it, or you may not. It's rolling out in waves, but you should get it within the next couple of months. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.